excited to welcome you to our tour today. For those of you who don't know me very well, my name is Kelsey and I am originally from Chicago. And my husband and I moved to Valencia, Spain last February. We're loving it, it's beautiful. And I have been taking quite a few trips lately. So this is one of the beautiful places that I am so excited to bring you to. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Colmar. Nestled in the heart of the Alsace region, Colmar in France is a picturesque town that exudes charm and historical significance. With its vibrant past dating back to the medieval era, Colmar has gracefully preserved its cultural heritage, creating a tapestry of architectural wonders and cobblestone streets that transport visitors to another time. Steeped in the influences of both German and French cultures, Colmar's unique identity is reflected in the half-timbered houses, flower-lined canals, and an ambiance that whispers tales of centuries gone by. Join me on a journey through the captivating history and allure of Colmar, where every corner reveals a story waiting to be discovered. With roots tracing back to the medieval period, this charming town has embraced its past, creating an enchanting blend of old world architecture and a vibrant atmosphere. In the heart of the picturesque Alsatian wine route, Colmar has become a haven for those seeking not only a glimpse into the past, but also an indulgence in the pleasures of the present. Beyond its medieval allure, the town is renowned for its vibrant markets, where locals and visitors alike gather to revel in the sensory delights of fresh produce, artisanal crafts, and the aroma of Alsatian cuisine. Colmar stands as a living canvas where the cobblestone streets echo the footsteps of generations, and each corner tells a story of the town's resilience and cultural mosaic. Whether wandering through its historic quarters or savoring the flavors of local delicacies in a traditional vinstube, Colmar promises an immersive experience that transcends time, making it a destination that captures the essence of the Alsace region and leaves an indelible mark on those fortunate enough to explore its enchanting streets. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the Alsace region. Nestled in the northeastern corner of France, the Alsace region captivates with its unique blend of cultural richness, architectural charm, and breathtaking landscapes. Bordering Germany and Switzerland, the Alsace boasts a distinctive Alsatian identity, evident in its picturesque villages, vineyard-draped hills, and a harmonious fusion of French and German influences. As a region renowned for its historical significance and gastronomic delights, Alsace beckons travelers to explore its enchanting towns, indulge in its culinary treasures, and revel in the warm embrace of its vibrant traditions. Some things to know about the Alsace region. Historic charm. The Alsace showcases a captivating blend of half-timbered houses, medieval castles, and cobblestone streets, transporting us visitors to a bygone era. Vineyard Splendor Renowned for its wine culture, Alsace boasts scenic vineyards producing world-class wines, including the iconic Riesling and Gewürztraminier. Culinary Excellence Alsace is a gastronomic haven where dishes like choucroute or sauerkraut, tarte flambe, and kugelhopf delight the taste buds with Alsatian flair. Fairy tale villages. Quaint villages like Aubernay and Riquier offer a fairy tale like ambiance with flower bedecked facades and charming squares. The Alsace wine route. The Alsace Wine Route winds through picturesque landscapes, inviting wine enthusiasts to explore vineyards and indulge in tastings. Cultural Harmony The region's cultural richness is reflected in its festivals, museums, and the Alsatian language, fostering a sense of identity. 
Strasbourg, the regional capital, boasts architectural treasures like the Strasbourg Cathedral and the historic district of La Petite France. Germanic influence. Despite its French affiliation, Alsace preserves a strong Germanic influence evident in its language, cuisine, and customs. Christmas markets. Alsace is renowned for its enchanting Christmas markets where festive traditions come alive amid twinkling lights and seasonal delights. Last but not least, natural beauty. From the Vosges Mountains to the Rhine River, Alsace's diverse landscape offer outdoor enthusiasts opportunities for hiking, biking, and scenic exploration. What's your favorite part about the Alsace region? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let me give you some info on half-timbered houses. These beautiful Tudor-style or medieval-style houses, architectural wonders that have left an indelible mark on the landscapes of Europe. Particularly during the medieval and Renaissance periods, these distinctive features of the house lie in their construction, where wooden frames or timbers are exposed on the exterior, creating a visually striking pattern. The origins of half-timbered houses can be traced back to medieval Europe, with their construction dating as far back as the 12th century. This architectural style became prevalent in regions where timber was abundant and skilled carpenters could craft intricate frameworks. The method involves creating a skeleton of horizontal and vertical timber members, which are then filled with materials like wattle or brick. The exposed timber beams are not only functional but also serve an aesthetic purpose, showcasing the craftsmanship of the builders. Half-timbered houses were favored for their flexibility and cost-effectiveness. The design allowed for variations in the infill material, and ex the exposed timber framework offered a visually appealing contrast. These houses often featured steeply pitched roofs, overhanging upper stories, and decorative elements contributing to their charming and picturesque appearance. Today, Half-timbered houses continue to captivate admirers worldwide, serving as both historical artifacts and contemporary residences. Their enduring popularity speaks to the timeless allure of this architectural style, which seamlessly blends practicality with artistic expression. Preservation and Restoration over the centuries, many half-timbered houses have faced the challenges of time, weather, and changing architectural preferences. Despite this, efforts to preserve and restore these historic structures have been ongoing. Preservation initiatives often involve careful maintenance, restoration of damaged timber elements, and adherence to strict building codes to ensure the safety and longevity of these structures. In regions where half-timbered houses are prevalent, such as parts of France and Germany, local authorities and communities have recognized the cultural and historical values of these buildings. Restoration projects not only aim to maintain the authenticity of these structures, but also contribute to the overall charm and uniqueness of the surrounding urban or rural landscapes. Modern Interpretations The timeless appeal of half-timbered houses as has transcended historical periods, inspiring modern architects to incorporate elements of this style into contemporary designs. Today, you can find new constructions that pay homage to the traditional half-timbered aesthetic while incorporating modern materials and construction techniques. This fusion of old and new showcases the enduring influence and adaptability of the half-timbered style in the world of architecture. Cultural significance. Beyond their architectural allure, half-timbered houses often hold cultural significance in the communities where they stand. Many of these structures have witnessed centuries of local history, serving as silent witnesses to societal change, economic shifts, and cultural evolutions. In some regions, half-timbered houses are associated with specific traditions, folklore, or local legends, adding an extra layer of richness to their cultural value. Tourist attractions, of course! Due to their picturesque and quaint appearance, 
many half-timbered houses have become tourist attractions in their own right. Travelers and history enthusiasts often seek out towns and villages known for their well-preserved or restored half-timbered architecture. These structures contribute to the unique character of these destinations, drawing visitors who appreciate the charm of a bygone era like me and the opportunity to step back in time as we explore cobblestone streets lined with these distinctive houses. Half-timbered houses are most popular in regions with rich medieval and Tudor history. Some of the notable places where these structures are prevalent include Germany, the Black Forest region, cities like Rotenburg op der Taube, and towns along the Romantic Road showcase a wealth of well-preserved half-timbered houses. France Alsace, particularly in towns like Strasbourg and Colmar, boasts a significant number of half-timbered structures that contribute to the region's charm. England! The Tudor period left an indelible mark on English architecture, with towns like Chester and Shrewsbury displaying numerous half-timbered buildings. Switzerland. Swiss cities like Lucerne and Bern feature half-timbered houses that blend seamlessly with the country's picturesque landscape. And the United States. In some historic East Coast cities like Annapolis and Williamsburg, as well as in New England, you can find replicas or even original structures inspired by European half-timbered styles. Where are your favorite half-timbered houses? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now that we're seeing all of these beautiful buildings, let me tell you a little bit about the history and importance of architecture in France. France boasts a rich tapestry of architectural marvels that reflects its extensive history and cultural diversity. The country is renowned for its iconic landmarks, such as the Eiffel Tower, a symbol of Paris and a masterpiece of iron construction built for the 1889 exposition Universelle. Another jewel in France's architectural crown is the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, a masterpiece of French Gothic architecture that has stood since the 12th century. But beyond Paris, France showcases a wide range of architectural styles and periods. The Palace of Versailles, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, epitomizes the grandeur of Baroque architecture with its opulent design and expansive gardens. The medieval beauty of Mont Saint-Michel, a rocky island commune in Normandy, offers a glimpse into France's historical fortifications and religious architecture. Additionally, France is home to charming villages with well-preserved half-timbered houses, medieval castles, and Romanesque churches. The architectural diversity from the classical elegance of the Louvre Museum to the contemporary Pompidou Center makes France a captivating destination for those enchanted by the artistry and history embedded in its architectural treasures, many of which you can see as we explore this beautiful location. While we explore some of these beautiful things, let me tell you a little bit about the history of art and literature in France. France has a rich and influential cultural history, particularly in the realms of art and literature. France played a pivotal role in medieval illuminated manuscripts, showcasing intricate illustrations and calligraphy. The, the Gothic art of illumination reached its zenith in French monastic communities. During the Renaissance, French artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and François Clouet produced masterpieces contributing to the broader European artistic movement. In the 17th and 18th centuries, French art embraced the Baroque and Rococo styles. Versailles, with its opulent decorations and paintings, exemplifies this period's artistic, achieve artistic achievements. The late 19th century witnessed the birth of Impressionism in France. Artists like Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir and Edgar Degas broke with tradition, capturing light and atmosphere in their works. The symbolist movement, prevalent in France during the late 19th and 20th centuries, sought to convey emotions and ideas through symbolic Im imagery. Gustave Moreau and Odilon Redon were prominent figures. 
The Art Nouveau mo movement, characterized by organic forms and intricate designs, flourished in France during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Hector Guimard's architectural works exemplify this style. The early 20th century saw the emergence of Cubism, spearheaded by artists like Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. This avant-garde movement revolutionized artistic perspectives. French literature played a significant role in the development of existentialist philosophy. Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, both literary figures and philosophers, explored existential themes. The new French wave in cinema is also of importance. In the 1950s and 1960s, France gave rise to the influential French new wave cinema movement. Filmmakers like François Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard reshaped cinematic storytelling. France boasts numerous Nobel laureates in literature, including Albert Camus, André Guide, and Jean-Paul Sartre, highlighting the nation's enduring literary impact. From medieval manuscripts to groundbreaking movements like Impressionism and existentialist literature, France has become a cultural epicenter, continually shaping and influencing the global landscape of art and literature. While we explore, let me tell you a little bit about the geography of France. Situated in Western Europe, France boasts a diverse and captivating geography that encompasses a variety of landscapes. This country is known for its picturesque countryside, including rolling vineyards in regions like Bordeaux and Burgundy, and expansive fields of lavender in Provence. If you're interested in seeing more of the lavender, check out my tour on Buy Me a Coffee of the Lavender Fields in Provence. The French Alps, home to iconic peaks like Mont Blanc, offer breathtaking mountain scenery and opportunities for winter sports. The coastal regions showcase the beauty of the Mediterranean in the south, with its azure waters and charming villages, contrasting with the rugged and dramatic cliffs of the Atlantic coastline in the west. The central part of France is characterized by fertile plains and historic river valleys, including the renowned Loire Valley. Additionally, the French Riviera along the Mediterranean is celebrated for its glamorous beaches and resorts. France's diverse geography not only contributes to its aesthetic appeal, but also influences its distinct regional cultures and culinary traditions. Culinary traditions, my favorite! <laughs> now, let me tell you a little bit about the history and important events of France. The history of France is a captivating tapestry, woven with a myriad of events spanning from ancient Gaul to the modern-day Fifth Republic. In ancient times, the region that is now France was inhabited by Celtic tribes, and it came under Roman rule in the first century BCE. The fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century ushered in the era of the Franks, a Germanic people who established the Carolingian Empire under Charlemagne in the 8th century. The medieval period saw the rise of feudalism, the construction of majestic cathedrals like Notre Dame, and the Hundred Years' War between France and England. The latter half of the medieval era witnessed the devastating impact of the Black Death, yet it also marked the Renaissance, with France becoming the center of art and learning. The absolutist ruler of Louis XIV in the 17th century established France as a dominant European power, but financial troubles and social inequity fueled the flames of the French Revolution in 1789. The revolution, symbolized by the storming of the Bastille and the declaration of the rights of man and of the citizen, led to the end of the monarchy and the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. The 19th century brought about further transformations, including the Industrial Revolution and the establishment of the Third Republic. France played a central role in both World War I and World War II, facing significant challenges and upheavals. The post-war period witnessed efforts to rebuild and solidify European unity, culminating in the establishment of the European Union. 
In the latter half of the 20th century, France experienced social and cultural shifts, epitomized by the May 1968 protests. The country has been an active participant in international affairs and has maintained its commitment to cultural pursuits, from literature and philosophy to cinema and fashion. The history of France is a narrative of resilience, innovation, and cultural prominence that continues to shape its identity on the global stage. Because we are seeing so many beautiful religious buildings, let me tell you a little bit about the history and background of religion in France and the importance it's played on society today. Historically, France has been predominantly Catholic, with the Catholic Church playing a significant role in shaping its culture and traditions. Secularism, or laïcité, is a deeply ingrained principle in French society. It emphasizes the separation of religion from state affairs and public institutions. In contemporary France, religious diversity has grown, with notable Muslim, Jewish, Protestant, and Buddhist communities coexisting alongside the Catholic majority. The French Constitution guarantees freedom of religion, allowing individuals to practice any faith or none at all. This aligns with the principles of the French Revolution. France is renowned for its stunning cathedrals and churches, many of which we are seeing here today, such as the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and the Chartres Cathedral, showcasing centuries of religious architectural brilliance. While Catholic holidays like Christmas and Easter are widely celebrated, France recognizes public holidays associated with different religions as well, prom promoting inclusivity. Religious symbols such as the Islamic headscarf have sparked debates about religious expression in public spaces, reflecting tensions between secularism and personal freedom. Festivals like Hanukkah, Ramadan, and Diwali are observed by their respective communities, adding a rich tapestry of cultural celebrations to the French calendar. Despite its historical religious roots, France has seen a decline in regular religious practice, along with a growing number of people identifying as non-religious or secular. Efforts to foster interfaith dialogue and understanding have emerged, though, aiming to create harmony among religious, diverse communities and promote social cohesion. Now a little bit of history for you. Religion in France has this rich and complex history that has evolved over centuries. In medieval times, the Catholic Church held immense influence, playing a central role in shaping both spiritual and political life. Cathedrals like Notre Dame de Paris, Chartres Cathedral, and Mont Saint-Michel stand as architectural marvels and symbols of the Church's power. The Hundred Years' War from 1337 to 1453 and the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century introduced challenges to Catholic dominance, fostering religious tensions. The French Revolution from 1789 to 1799 marked a transformative period for religion in France. The revolutionaries sought to establish a secular state, leading to the de-Christianization campaign, the establishment of the cult of reason, and the rise of secularism. The Napoleonic era brought relative religious stability with the Concordat of 1801, recognizing Catholicism as the major religion but allowing freedom of worship. Subsequent years witnessed waves of secularism, challenging traditional religious norms. Today, France embraces religious diversity. While Catholicism, Catholicism remains prominent, the landscape includes growing Muslim, Jewish, Protestant, and other communities. The principle of laïcité, emphasizing the separation of religion from the state, underscores France's commitment to secular values. While we explore, let me tell you a little bit about the Roman history in France. The Roman presence in France, or Gaul as it was known in ancient times, unfolded through a series of military campaigns and strategic conquests. The conquest of the southern part of Gaul began in 121 BCE when the Roman general Gnaeus Domitius Aenorbarbus established the province of Gallia Transalpina, 
Subsequent victories by Roman commanders such as Julius Caesar expanded Roman control further north, leading to the establishment of Gallia Narbonensis, a Roman province that included the region from the Alps to the Pyrenees. One significant aspect of Roman influence was their advanced engineering and infrastructure development. Romans constructed an extensive network of roads, with the Via Dolmitia being one of the earliest, connecting Italy to Hispania through Gaul. This not only facilitated military movements, but also promoted trade and cultural exchange. Roman cities, characterized by well-organized grids and monumental structures, emerged across this region. Nîmes, for example, boasts the well-preserved Maison Carré, temple, and the iconic Pont du Gard aqueduct, showcasing Roman engineering brilliance. The Romanization of Gaul extended beyond the physical landscape. Latin, the language of the Romans, left an enduring impact on the linguistic landscape, influencing the development of local dialects. The Roman legacy in France is a complex tapestry of architectural marvels, linguistic evolution, and cultural assimilation, leaving behind a profound imprint on the history and identity of this region. While we explore, let me tell you a little bit about the history and importance of wine in France. France is deeply rooted in the traditions, innovations, and a profound appreciation for the art of winemaking. The cultivation of grapes and winemaking in France dates back to ancient times, with evidence of vineyards established by the Greeks in around the year 600 BCE. The Romans played a crucial role in shaping French viticulture. They introduced new grape varieties and advanced winemaking techniques during their occupation of Gaul, or modern-day France. Monasteries in medieval France became centers of winemaking excellence. Monks meticulously studied and improved grape cultivation and winemaking methods, preserving and expanding knowledge. Bordeaux in southwestern France became a renowned wine region during the 12th century. The region's reputation for producing high-quality wine grew, setting the stage for Bordeaux's global acclaim. The Burgundy region emphasized the concept of terroir, where the unique combination of soil, climate, and grape variety influences the taste of the wine. The philosophy became integral to French winemaking. Champagne, the world-famous sparkling wine, originated in the Champagne region during the 17th century. The method of secondary fermentation in the bottle, known as méthode champenoise, was perfected by French winemakers. The French established the AOC, Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, system in the early 20th century, a pioneering classification that regulates and designates the geographical origin and quality of wines. France France has stringent laws governing winemaking, emphasizing the importance of specific grape varieties, winemaking processes, and the geographic indications to protect the integrity of regional wines. French wines, including Bordeaux, Burgundy, and Champagne, have had a profound impact on the global wine industry. French winemaking practices and grape varieties are emulated worldwide. Wine is deeply embedded in French culture and lifestyle. It plays a central role in culinary traditions, social gatherings, and celebrations, reflecting the French appreciation for craftsmanship and quality. The history of wine in France is a narrative of innovation, craftsmanship, and the artistry of blending tradition with modern techniques, solidifying France's standing as a premier wine-producing nation. Now, as we pass by all these beautiful and sometimes delicious places, let me tell you a little bit about something that is very important in the history of culinary heritage here. Truffles. They are a culinary treasure with deep roots. Truffles, these highly prized mushrooms that grow underground near the roots of certain trees, have a storied history and hold a special place in the world of gastronomy. The use of truffles dates back to ancient civilizations, with evidence suggesting that they were enjoyed by the ancient Greeks and Romans. 
These elusive mushrooms were celebrated for their unique, intense aroma and distinctive flavor. Historically, truffles were revered for their supposed aphrodisiacal properties, leading to their association with luxury and indulgence. The tradition of truffle hunting, utilizing specially trained dogs or pigs to sniff out hidden treasures, has been passed down through generations in truffle-rich regions. Italy, in particular, the regions of Piedmont and Umbria, these places have been at the forefront of truffle cultivation and gastronomic appreciation. Truffle festivals, such as the one in Alba, Italy, have become annual events that attract enthusiasts and connoisseurs from all over the world. In modern culinary circles, truffles are considered a delicacy, gracing the tables of fine dining establishments. Their unique and earthy flavor elevates dishes, making them a sought-after ingredient among chefs and foodies alike. The symbiotic relationship between truffles and tree roots contributes to the complexity and depth of truffle flavors. As a result, truffles have become synonymous with haute cuisine, adding a touch of luxury to various dishes, from pastas to sauces. Despite their humble subterranean origin, truffles have risen to culinary stardom, embodying a rich history and taste that continues to captivate the palates of those who appreciate the finer aspects of gastronomy. The art of truffle hunting is quite interesting. It involves pigs, dogs, and the hunt for culinary gold. Truffle hunting is an ancient practice that has evolved into a delicate art, combining the keen senses of animals with human intuition. While truffle-sniffing pigs were traditionally employed for the task, today, specially trained dogs have largely taken over the role due to their more controllable behavior and lower risk of damaging the delicate truffle patches. The process of training these animals for truffle hunting, hunting is intricate and begins at a very young age. Small puppies are exposed to the scent of truffles, and as they grow, they are trained to recognize and locate the distinct aroma emanating from this mushroom. Pigs, with their natural inclination for rooting, were historically favored for truffle hunting. However, their unrestrained enthusiasm for the hunt sometimes led to damaged truffles and challenging control. In contrast, dogs are trained to be precise and gentle, signaling the discovery of truffles without causing harm. Truffle hunters and their four-legged companions form a unique bond built on trust and shared purpose, navigating the wooded landscapes to uncover these hidden culinary treasures. The scent of truffles, which contains a compound similar to the sex pheromones of male pigs, triggers the animal's innate hunting instincts. This natural attraction has contributed to the historical use of pigs in truffle hunting. However, to prevent the pigs from consuming their finds, dogs with their reward-based training have become the preferred choice for modern truffle hunters. Whether guided by a pig's snout or a dog's nose, the collaboration between human and animal is an essential aspect of the centuries-old tradition of truffle hunting, adding a touch of mystery and allure to the culinary world. In terms of cost, the rarity and cost of culinary jewels, let's talk a little bit about understanding truffle prices. Truffles are often referred to as culinary gold, and they are prized for their unique and intense flavors, which infuse dishes with an unmistakable aroma and taste. The high price of truffles can be attributed to several factors that contribute to their scarcity and the labor-intensive process of harvesting. Truffles are elusive, growing underground in a symbiotic relationship with the roots of certain trees. Their reliance on specific environmental conditions, such as the right soil composition, climate, and tree species, make them challenging to cultivate. The difficulty of cultivating truffles has led to a heavy reliance on natural foraging, adding an element of unpredictability to their availability. Truffle production is inherently limited by nature and fluctuations in harvests can occur due to factors like weather conditions. This scarcity, combined with the strong demand for truffles in high-end culinary establishments, elevates their market value. Prices for truffles can vary significantly based on factors such as the type of truffle, its size, and its quality. 
The two primary varieties, white truffles and black truffles, command different prices, while with white truffles generally being more expensive. Additionally, the location of the truffle and its method of cultivation contribute to pricing differentials. On average, truffle price prices can range from several hundred to several thousand per pound, making them one of the most expensive and sought after ingredients in the culinary world. The allure of truffles lies not only in their exquisite flavor, but also in the rarity and complexity of the processes that bring these culinary jewels from the forest floor to our dining table. What do you like to eat truffles with? Let me know in the comments below. In terms of what some people eat them with, pairing truffles with complementary foods has become a culinary art. The distinctive and luxurious flavor of truffles has earned them a revered status in the world of haute cuisine. Chefs and food enthusiasts alike appreciate truffles for their availability to transform ordinary dishes into extraordinary culinary experiences. Truffles are versatile and can be enjoyed in various forms, such as pasta dishes. Truffle-infused pasta dishes, such as truffle pasta or truffle risotto, are classic choices. The earthy aroma and savory notes of truffles complement the richness of pasta, creating a harmonious blend of flavors. Eggs. Truffles and eggs are a match made in gastronomic heaven. Whether shaved over a simple omelet or incorporated into scrambled eggs, truffles add a decadent touch, elevating this breakfast staple to new heights. Cheeses. Truffles pair exceptionally well with various cheeses, enhancing their flavors. Truffle-infused cheeses, or a drizzle of truffle honey, for example, over a cheese platter, can create a delightful combination of textures and tastes. Are you hungry yet? <laughs> Meats. Truffles can be used to elevate the taste of meat, such as beef, poultry, or game. Whether incorporated into sauces, rubs, or simply shaved over grilled meats, truffles add depth and complexity to the dishes. Potatoes. Truffle-infused mashed potatoes or truffle fries are popular choices that showcase the affinity for truffles and potatoes. The earthiness of the truffles complements the starchy goodness of potatoes. As they say, if it grows together, it goes together. Seafood. Seafood dishes such as a risotto with truffles and scallops allow the delicate flavors of the seafood to harmonize with the aromatic and umami qualities of the truffles. Butter and oils. Truffle butter, or truffle-infused oils, are versatile condiments that can be used to impart the essence of truffles to various dishes. They are often employed as finishing touches to enhance the overall flavor profile. And last but not least, popcorn. For a gourmet twist on a classic snack, truffle popcorn has gained popularity. The combination of the earthy truffle flavor with the crunchiness of popcorn provides a delightful and unexpected treat. These pairings highlight the versatility of truffles, allowing their unique taste to shine in, ver in a variety of culinary creations. Whether incorporated into comfort classics or used to elevate fine dining experiences, truffles continue to be a sought-after ingredient for those with a discerning palate. Do you like truffles? Let me know in the comments below. While we wander, let me give you some history about what we are wandering on. Cobblestone streets. With their unique charm and enduring appeal, cobblestone streets have a history rooted in the ancient past. Dating back to at least the third millennium BCE, cobblestone roads were prevalent in early civilizations such as Mesopotamia, where stones were carefully arranged to create stable pathways. The Romans further refined this technique, incorporating cobblestone streets into their extensive road network, known as the Roman roads, which facilitated trade, communication, and military movements across their vast empire. During the Middle Ages, cobblestone streets became widespread in European cities, including medieval market towns. The durable and permeable nature of cobblestone made it a practical choice for navigating the challenges of time, such as mud or uneven terrain. As urban centers developed, cobblestone streets continued to play a crucial role, contributing to the historical character of cities. 
while many cities have transitioned to more modern paving materials, cobblestone streets endure in various locations, serving as tangible remnants of the past and contributing to the distinctive atmosphere of historic districts worldwide. In the centuries that followed, cobblestone streets became synonymous with old world charm and were widely adopted in European cities, forming the picturesque landscapes that define many historic districts. The craftsmanship involved in laying cobblestone was an art, and the street often showcased intricate patterns and designs. Despite the advent of more modern road construction materials, some cities, especially in Europe, have preserved cobblestone streets as a nod to their rich cultural heritage and as a unique feature that attracts tourists. Cobblestone streets also made their mark on colonial America, where they were employed in the layout of early settlements and provided a solid foundation for growing communities. As urbanization progressed, many American cities maintained cobblestone streets in specific neighborhoods, allowing residents and visitors to step back in time as they walked along these enduring pathways. Today, cobblestone streets continue to evoke a sense of nostalgia, serving as a tangible link to the past and a testament to the enduring legacy of this ancient and incredible construction technique. In the 19th century, the use of cobblestone streets extended to new regions, including parts of North America, where it became a symbol of progress and urban development. The durability of cobblestone proved particularly advantageous in areas with heavy traffic and adverse weather conditions. Many cities in the United States, such as Boston and San Francisco, incorporated cobblestone streets into their infrastructure, showcasing the adaptability of this time-honored paving method. While cobblestone streets were once a necessity driven by practical considerations, their enduring popularity stems from their aesthetic appeal and the sense of character they bring to a place. Modern urban planning and preservation efforts often recognize the historical value of cobblestone streets, leading to the restoration and maintenance of these charming thoroughfares in various parts of the world. Today, cobblestone streets are not only pathways, but also symbols of heritage, contributing to the distinctive character of the neighborhoods they grace. Cobblestone streets are most prominently featured in historic districts and older parts of cities around the world, while their preservation adds a touch of nostalgia and authenticity. Some of the most popular places to experience cobblestone streets include Old Town Prague in the Czech Republic. The winding streets of Prague's Old Town are adorned with charming cobblestones, enhancing the city's medieval atmosphere. Mont Saint-Michel in France. The iconic island commune features narrow cobblestone streets that wind through its medieval structures, creating a timeless ambiance. Old San Juan in Puerto Rico. Cobblestone streets characterize the historic district of Old San Juan, providing a picturesque backdrop to the vibrant colors of the colonial architecture. Lisbon's Alfama district in Portugal. The Alfama district's labyrinthine streets are paved with cobblestones, contributing to the neighborhood's authentic charm. Cologne's Old Town in Germany. Cobblestone streets line the historic old town of Cologne, adding to the city's rich architectural heritage. Gamlestan in Stockholm in Sweden. The medieval heart of Stockholm, Gamlestan, boasts cobblestone streets transporting visitors back in time. Beacon Hill in Boston in the U.S. Known for its historic charm, Beacon Hill in Boston features cobblestone streets enhancing its colonial era allure. Old Town Alexandria in Virginia in the U.S. Cobblestone streets characterize the, skitty, the cityscape of Old Town Alexandria, reflecting its centuries-old history. Barri Gothique in Barcelona in Spain. The Gothic quarter of Barcelona is home to meandering cobblestone streets that lead to its historic landmarks and hidden gems. Gant in Belgium. The well-preserved medieval architecture of Gant, or Ghent, is com complemented by cobblestone streets, creating a picturesque environment for exploration. 
These locations showcase the enduring charm of cobblestone streets and offer visitors a chance to step back in time while exploring the rich history of these vibrant urban areas. Where are your favorite cobblestone streets? Let me know in the comments below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe! Now, let me tell you about one of my very favorite neighborhoods in all of France. This neighborhood is called La Petite France, and it is nestled within the heart of Strasbourg. It is a captivating neighborhood that transports visitors to a bygone era. This picturesque quarter, renowned for its half-timbered houses, meandering canals, and cobblestone streets, exudes an old-world charm that has made it an iconic destination. Once home to fishermen, tanners, and millers, La Petite France now stands as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, preserving its medieval architecture and inviting visitors to explore its enchanting lanes. Some interesting things to know about La Petite France. Historical ambiance. La Petite France is a well-preserved medieval district, offering a glimpse into Strasbourg's rich history. The half-timbered houses. This quarter is renowned for its charming half-timbered houses, adorned with vibrant flowers and ornate details. Canal network. Picturesque canals wind through this area, creating a romantic atmosphere and providing scenic views. Miller's District. La Petite France was once home to millers, whose water mills are still visible along the canals today. Historic Bridges. Quaint bridges such as the Pont Couvert connect different parts of La Petite France, enhancing its allure. Artisan Workshops. Artisan workshops showcasing traditional craftsmanship, including pottery and woodworking, are all over this district. Le Pont du Corbeau. This iconic bridge dating back to the 13th century is a symbol of Strasbourg's medieval heritage. Culinary Delights. Enjoy Alsatian cuisine in charming restaurants along the canals, offering a taste of local flavors. St. Martin's Church. Visit the Church of St. Martin, an impressive Gothic structure with a rich history. Museum Alsatian. Delve into the local culture at the Museum Alsatian, housed in a 17th century building, displaying regional artifacts. La Petite France's timeless beauty and cultural significance make it a must-visit destination for those seeking an immersive experience in the heart of Strasbourg. Thank you for visiting this amazing neighborhood with me, one of my favorites in all of France. While we walk, we're seeing so many beautiful things. Also, while things like architecture may visually define a culture, certain intangible aspects, such as etiquette, play a subtle yet crucial role in shaping the essence of a society, as is notably evident in the rich cultural tapestry of France. Social etiquette in France holds a rich history deeply rooted in cultural traditions, shaping interactions and daily life. Politeness and formality are highly valued, reflecting a respect for others and societal norms. The French emphasis on manners dates back centuries, influenced by courtly behavior during the reign of King Louis XIV, and today proper etiquette extends to various aspects of life, from greetings to dining customs. The French prioritize proper greetings, including the use of titles like Monsieur and Madame. Handshakes are common, and it's customary to use polite expressions like s'il vous plaît, please, and merci, thank you. Meals are a social affair, and adhering to dining etiquette is crucial. This includes holding cutlery co correctly, keeping hands on the table, and waiting for the host to start the meal. The French savor their food and engage in leisurely dining. Being punctual is a sign of respect in French culture. Arriving on time for social events, meetings, and appointments is essential. The French language has distinct formal and informal registers. In English, we only have one. Using tu or vous appropriately reflects the level of familiarity and respect in a relationship, even though tu and vous 
both translate to English as the word you. French people value personal space, and it's customary to maintain a comfortable distance during conversations. Close physical contact may be reserved for close friends and family only. A common form of greeting in France is the bis, a kiss on both cheeks. The number of kisses varies by region, ranging from one to four. Make sure you know which cheek your kissing partner is going for so that you don't accidentally have a very close meeting. <laughs> the French take pride in their wine culture as well, and knowing a bit about wine is considered sophisticated. When toasting, maintain eye contact and say à votre santé, to your health. Many businesses in France shut down or operate on reduced hours in the month of August. This is as people traditionally take extended vacations during this month. France is renowned for its fashion, and the French often prioritize well-tailored clothing. Dressing appropriately for different occasions is a sign of respect. There's also national holidays like Bastille Day, July 14th, which are celebrated with events, parades, and fireworks, offering a glimpse into French patriotism and cultural pride. In essence, social etiquette in France is a, bland, a blend of historical customs and contemporary values, emphasizing respect, courtesy, and appreciation for the finer aspects of life. Now, let me tell you some interesting things about French people. Kissing on cheeks. Greetings often include kissing on both cheeks, which can be a surprise for those unfamiliar with this custom. Bread etiquette. It's considered impolite to place bread upside down on a table. It's a cultural superstition. Based on the idea that placing bread upside down on a table in France is known as pain maudit, or cursed bread. This belief is that placing bread upside down brings bad luck, possibly because it's associated with the devil. This superstition is not universally followed, and many people do not take it seriously. However, it is a quirky aspect of French culture that some may observe, especially in relation to it also being the bread that was reserved for the city's executioner. Closed shops on Sundays. Many shops and businesses close on Sundays. This is a tradition aimed at promoting family time. Red traffic lights. In France, it's legal to proceed at a red traffic light if it's flashing, indicating the intersection is clear. Punctuality, flexibility. French social events often start a bit later than the stated time, and punctuality is somewhat flexible. Anti-McDonald's activism. France has a history of anti-McDonald's sentiments, with some citizens protesting against this fast food giant. La bis complexity. The tradition of ki cheek kissing, la bis, can be confusing due to the regional variations in the number of kisses and side starting. August vacations. Many businesses shut down in August, and it is common for people to take extended vacations during this month. After visiting France many times in the month of August, I can confirm that this is correct. <laughs> Love for strikes. France has a reputation for frequent strikes, with various sectors participating in protest actions. Formality in addressing people. Formal titles like Monsieur and Madame are often used among acquaintances even, emphasizing politeness. Cheese variety. France boasts an extensive and diverse range of cheeses with unique varieties specific to certain regions. Dinner time. French dinners tend to be a bit later, with some restaurants opening for dinner service at around 7 or 8 p.m. Secularism. France maintains a strict secular stance, evident in the ban on religious symbols in public institutions. High-speed trains, the TGV, train à grande vitesse, 
is one of the world's fastest trains, reflecting France's commitment to efficient transportation. Bread and wine priority. <laughs> Both bread and wine hold significant cultural importance in French meals, often taking precedence. Formal language protection. France has laws protecting the French language, restricting the use of foreign words in advertising and official communication, as well as the amount of time that f songs not in the French language can be played on the radio. Fashion faux pas. Wearing sportswear outside of athletic activities might be considered a fashion faux pas in some circles. Last but not least, the art of doing nothing. The French appreciation of the art of simply enjoying life is often seen in leisurely meals and relaxed social interactions. Because we are seeing so much French in the country of France, let me tell you a little bit about the history. The history of the French language is a captivating journey that begins with its roots in what else but Latin. Following the Roman Empire's conquest of Gaul in the 1st century BCE, Latin evolved into Vulgar Latin, laying the foundation for the Romance languages. Over the centuries, Old French emerged in the 9th to the 14th centuries, influenced by Germanic and Celtic languages. The Norman conquest of England in 1066 introduced Old France, Old French words into English. During the Middle French period, the 14th to the 17th centuries, French became the language of European aristocracy and diplomacy. The Renaissance marked a literary flourishing, with many iconic works. The 17th century Académie Française was established to regulate and standardize the language. French's prominence in diplomacy persisted, becoming the language of treaties. The 18th century Enlightenment further enriched French literature and philosophy. French underwent simplifications during the Revolution, and the 20th century saw global francophonie growth. Today, the French language stands as a testament to its historical evolution and enduring cultural influence. Now, I have some fun facts for you about the French language. So, French is the official language of France, and its influence extends globally as one of the six official languages of the United Nations. French belongs to the Romance language group, derived from Latin, as we talked about. It shares roots with Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian. If you speak any of these languages, let me know in the comments below. I've always wondered if people who speak Italian and Spanish are able to understand each other. The French alphabet consists of 26 letters, similar to the English alphabet, with accents like a little flip up on an E or a flip down on an E, a little hat over an E, or a C with a little tail. French has historically been the language of diplomacy and international re relations. It was widely used in treaties and diplomatic correspondence. The Académie Française, established in 1635, is responsible for preserving and regulating the French language, and it publishes the official French dictionary. With over 300 million speakers worldwide, French is spoken on every continent. The international organization of La Francophonie promotes the use of French globally. French literature has a rich history with influential figures like Victor Hugo, Gustave Flaubert, and Albert Camus. French is renowned for its poetic expression. Many legal terms used internationally, especially in areas of diplomacy and law, are in French. Examples include, but are not limited to, cul-de-sac and voir dire. French is commonly taught as a second language worldwide. Alliance Française, a global organization, promotes French language and culture. French is known for its colorful idioms and expressions, adding flair to everyday communication. Some examples include c'est la vie and déjà vu. What's your favorite idiom or French expression? Let me know in the comments below. The French language, with its elegance and cultural significance, continues to be a global linguistic force.
In conclusion, Colmar stands as a testament to the timeless allure of Alsace, presenting a harmonious blend of history, culture, and architectural splendor. The winding canals, vibrant flower-decked facades, and cobblestone streets transport visitors to another era, creating an enchanting atmosphere that has made Colmar a cherished destination. Whether exploring its medieval old town or savoring the local culinary delights, a visit to Colmar promises an immersive experience that captures the essence of this picturesque Alsatian gem. With its rich tapestry of stories, Colmar invites travelers to step into a world where every street corner reveals a new chapter in the captivating tale of Alsace. For a more in-depth look at this location, as well as over a hundred locations around the world, check out my Explore with Kelsey tours in the Buy Me a Coffee links in the information below this video. Happy travels! Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for your donations, for your tips, for your PayPal's. And as always, thank you for being a part of my traveling family. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye everyone. Don't forget to follow and like this video for more with me, Explore with Kelsey.